Here we have a 2000 Newton box that's being supported as shown in the picture. We want to find the tension in this cable. This cable here that makes a 30 degree angle with the vertical. Well, let's start by drawing the forces, the forces that are acting on this beam. Well, we have the tension force that goes along the uh, cable. We have the force of gravity and that's just the weight of the box, mg. And then we also have the force here, which I'm going to call the hinge force. Great. Now, we know to use some of the torques equals I alpha. And if we use that, we can eliminate one of these forces. And the reason I say that is because torque, by definition, is equal to R cross F, the cross product, where R is the distance from the application of the force to the rotational axis, and then F is the force vector. Well, what does this tell us? This tells us that the torque is equal to the perpendicular distance from the application of the force to the rotational axis. And of course, I can do it this way as well. The main point is that these two have to be perpendicular to each other. Excellent. So the next thing to do is to choose a pivot. And I will choose this as my pivot. And this effectively eliminates the hinge force. And that's because, well, if we write it out, the torque from the hinge, well, that's just the force of the hinge times zero. Because the distance from the application of the force to the rotational axis, well, it's zero. It's in the same place. So when the rotational axis is here, this force is not a torque. Now, what about from the uh, tension of the cable? Well, that's going to equal the Y component times L. Now, why do I say that? Well, if I take the Y component here, TY, let me actually use red so it shows up a little better. Well, here's the Y component of the tension force, and then this right here, well, that's the distance from the application of the force to the rotational axis, and it's equal to a distance of L. Excellent. Well, the weight is at the same point, so the torque from the torque of gravity, let's call it, well, that's just equal to mg, the force of gravity, times L. Excellent. So now I have the torques acting on this object, and it's important to note, and I'll draw this in green, that the force of gravity is down, pointing downward, so it's going to cause a torque like this. Whereas the torque from the cable, well, it's going the other way, so it's going to cause a torque like this. So these two torques are, are opposite each other. So I have the torque from the tension of the cable minus the torque of gravity, and that equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. But as we can see, the box is not moving, therefore there is no angular acceleration, and so this side is zero. Excellent. All that's left to do now is to plug things in. So I have Ty, the Y component of the tension force, times L, minus Mg, L, equals zero. If I divide everywhere by L, these guys cancel. And I get that the, the Y component of this tension force in the cable is equal to the force of gravity. Well, now I can just draw a triangle. I know that if this is the whoops, if this is the tension force, and this is the y component. This angle is 30 degrees. This would of course be the x component. Oops. Now I can write that the y component of the tension force is equal to the tension force cosine 30 degrees just by applying a little trigonometry here. And therefore, over here I get the full tension force times cosine 30 degrees is equal to mg. And now I can just plug in the numbers. Um, we'll first divide both sides by cosine 30. So I get mg over cosine 30 degrees. And the mass times gravity, well, that's 2,000 newtons. 
It's given to us in the picture. And that divided by cosine 30 degrees. Well, 2,000 divided by cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 2,300 newtons.